Hey folks, the Red Scourge here, and welcome into the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils Dynasty in NCAA 06. We are going to put them in the Sun Belt, and we are actually going to bring in a couple rivals from the SWAC. Um, let's see. And Alabama A&M. I like to try to keep geographical accuracy as much as possible. And we are going to create our coach, Willie Totten. And I am aware that in my intro video, I kind of set this in 2005 when this game came out, when, when this whole, uh, you know, when the dynasty starts. Um, but I know Willie Totten had already been coaching at Mississippi Valley State at that point. I think he was hired in 2000. In 2006 was his last year as head coach there. He's currently assistant coach and quarterbacks coach for the Delta Devils. But in between, I think he was the head coach at Alabama A&M, if I remember correctly. Faces are pretty limited. I'm just going with this. And we'll call it a day. So how I'm going to run this dynasty is I will just show highlights from the actual games and then kind of updates on recruiting as we go through. And, you know, if I happen to have players on award watch lists or anything like that, kind of update as, as I go along. If I don't, just assume that <laughs> they're not on there. But we're going to take a really quick look at the roster. It kind of doesn't affect the way I'll recruit, at least in the in-season recruiting. Because if you're familiar with 06 in doing FCS teams, uh, team needs are going to be incredible. It's I'm going to need so many players, it's ridiculous. So um, I've actually played briefly with this team before. Aries Nelson's only a 56 but he's quick enough to run the option, surprisingly, with 62 speed. And pretty solid. I'll be playing on All-American to start. I might step up to All-American with harder sliders. I don't love playing on Heisman mode in 06 because the kicking meter is so fast. It's like impossible for me to do it. So I normally play on All-American with really tough sliders. But we'll see what happens. First year, I don't want to get fired. So um, and we're going to start off on All-American. Marcus April is probably the best player on the team. I don't know stats-wise, but speed-wise, he's the he's the fastest. Be leaning on him quite a bit. I'm going to start off running my RPO type kind of spread run pass offense. Um, it's cool because in these older games, there is there are actual RPO plays. They're they're called PA read, play action read. If you're interested in doing it i'm not going to show play selection um but probably what i'll do is make sure like the play art is up when i when i record the footage for each play so it keeps the pace going well throughout the game and then you're not seeing me pick through different plays brian miller statistics wise is the best player It won't really matter, but I'm probably run a 4-3 defense primarily to start with. Although I could run 4-2-5. I mean, it doesn't really matter. My second safety is a 44, and my second defensive tackle is a 44. So I don't really know if it matters. I like running 4-2-5 as my base, typically. So that's it. Not going to be doing a lot of kicking <laughs> in year one. So we'll get in here and do a little bit of recruiting. So, yeah, if we look at the team needs, you see it on the right-hand side. I need three quarterbacks, two tailbacks, one fullback, four wide receivers. Like, if you've ever done an FCS build in 06, that's par for the course. So we're going to get some walk-ons. That's actually okay in, these, in the PS2 era games. Walk-ons are a bit better than in the later generation ones. Like, I can get walk-ons in the low to mid-50s, and they can't actually be starters right away. So, I don't ever cut players to make room for walk-ons, because I'll have 
I'll have returning players that are worse than some walk-ons I would get, and I don't like to do that because I feel like it's cheating. As far as recruiting, what we're going to do is year one, I'm going to at least in the in-season recruiting where the the lowest caliber is three-star guys, um, I'm going to limit myself to recruiting just Mississippi. Um, I can re- recruit any caliber in Mississippi and then three stars and down for any any um, state that happens to be a pipeline currently. And I, don't, I actually don't know what states those are. So, oh, there are no quarterbacks in Mississippi. That's unfortunate. I've got a lot of seniors, and that's going to be a problem. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna throw guys on the board. I would really love to move to running like a flex bone triple option or at least an I form triple option if I can. In these games, Mississippi typically has a decent amount of players, but not like Florida or California or any of those. Okay. I need to recruit a quarterback. In-season recruiting is a little bit easier. You have a shot at better players. Okay, so I have to manually go through and see if I have any other pipeline states. If not, we're going to go with what I said because I said it, and I'm not changing now. I'll try to expand to neighboring states in the future to create pipelines. I know it in this game you have to you don't have to use as many recruiting points on them in off-season recruiting when they're from pipeline states. I think it's just Mississippi. Which is not super surprising. These rosters I believe were um Fairdale Kings rosters. And so I imagine they're pretty accurate as far as like where the players on my team are from. And MVSU is really small. I did not know how small that town and that school was until I did that intro, did the research. Okay, so I can really only recruit one more player. Am I already breaking my rule? I'm already breaking my rule. <laughs> um... We're going to go with that. We're just going to go with that. We're not going to redshirt anyone because it doesn't matter. I need everyone to play this year. The other thing I've noticed is that if you start a dynasty and you don't pull in other FCS schools, like your Tennessee Martin is on the schedule, um, so I've... I don't know if it works with every dynasty, but I've noticed that sometimes if you beat that team and you're right on the cusp of being bowl eligible, that you sometimes aren't bowl eligible because you beat a team that's like not actually in, you haven't pulled them into the FBS. So I try to avoid doing that. Um, let's see, the Jackson State and Alabama A&M are in conference. We are maybe going to pick some max schools. I would love to be able to be bowl eligible year one. Could play the Zips. I don't know. I don't know. Now that I've already done it, I feel like I should have pulled in more HBCUs. Looking at Bethune Cookman now, I'm like... Wondering if I should have done that. We'll play UConn. I think they're decent, though. Is this the year they had, um... Was it Donald Brown at tailback? And he broke the... The FBS rushing record? I could be in trouble. New Mexico State's definitely going on there. Um... UT Martin... Is not... Going to be on the schedule. We'll play Tulsa. How about that? And no thank you to Oklahoma State. I don't mind playing really tough schools, but I'm frankly not as good at this game as I am with NCAA 14. So I'm trying to give myself a fighting chance. You know, the idea is to have fun as well. We'll play Syracuse. Got a couple Power Five schools. Or ooh, 
some of these UConn might be in the Big East still. And make sure I have six home games. Yeah, okay. And they're spaced out evenly for... Kind of? Kind of spaced out evenly for recruits visiting. We'll play at UConn and make Army come to us. All right, that looks good. So we're going to start up this game versus UConn. And I am not going to talk through the gameplay. I find it pretty difficult. I also don't think I'm very entertaining when I do that, and I don't play as well. So um, I will be back with you all at the end of the game. Welcome, everyone. Brad Nessler here for EA Sports with my co-host, Kirk Herbstreet, and the coach, Lee Corso. No complaints about the weather tonight as we see nothing but stars in this contest between the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils and the Connecticut Huskies. Welcome to the first week of the college football season. Opening day is always filled with miraculous plays and bitter defeats. And here come the Huskies. The Delta Devils may be overmatched and could have an ugly game on their hands. Any thoughts, Kirk? Connecticut comes into this football game led by their quarterback, and he's such a leader, Brad. Believe me, he won't buy into any of this pregame. We're going to blow him out, Hoopla. He's a focused competitor, and he'll be ready to play. Nice pick, Kirk. You better believe it. UConn is going to win this game. This one's almost underway, so we're about to find out real quick just how smart of a pick that was, Coach. For. This big time playmaking receiver is going to have his hands full getting open today. He's going up against a tough cornerback. I don't care how good a corner you are, you're going to need some help covering this receiver. He's an impact player that comes up with big plays whenever his team needs him. Kirk's right. You can't go one on one the entire game against this receiver and not expect to get beat. He should be a lot of fun to watch. The Delta Devil line up with three wide. Across the middle. Got it to him on the run. Nice decision by the quarterback. Four wide. Nelson drops the throw. Look out. And it's knocked down. Goes with the ace set here. Nelson drops back. Throws this one out to the left. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley State. My goodness, guys, that was a spectacular play by the wide receiver. The coach has gone to great lengths to shepherd his receivers, and we've seen the results on the field. The 29-yard line. The Huskies line up with three wide. They're going to pitch it. The 50. And down he goes. How about that play call? Anytime you can pick up chunks of yards like that, it's a good call no matter what the play is. Yeah, you're right. Great play here. They toss it to the halfback with fine blocking up front. He's able to capital. Connecticut lines up in a double tight set. Toss. Big opening. Coach, he picked up a few on that one before the... Looks like they'll try to power it right into the heart of the defense. They'll keep it on the ground again. And they hit him in the backfield. A loss on that one. Brockington wants the ball. We'll see if they give it to him. They'll run the option. And there's a fumble. Hawley with a recovery. Touchdown, UConn! They'll get the ball here at the 22-yard line. Mississippi Valley State comes out with two tight ends. He has some room. They'll bring him down. Nelson with the carry. Ball on their own 31. Four wide. Juke move. And he's tackled. 
Mississippi Valley State lines up for the shotgun set. Nelson on the option. He might have a chance. And they make the stop. That's a gain of eight. Mississippi Valley State comes out with three receivers bunch. Nelson steps back to pass. Throws this one out to the left. Barnes brings him down. Successful the first time on this drive. The Delta Devil come out in the shotgun. Across the middle. He catches another. The Devil come out showing three wide. Look. Let's it go. Complete. And he's going to lose yards on this one. A four yard loss. And so we've reached the end of quarter number one, and we're all tied first two. The Delta Devil set up in the gun. Comes across the middle. Got it to the senior. He's all the way. Touchdown. And he makes his second visit to the end zone with that catch. Well, that was a great catch by the receiver. He ran a perfect route to get open for his second score of the game. do is to come out and do nothing again and give them even more confidence. Connecticut sets up with four receivers, steps up in the pocket. He's going left. The 50 at the 40, at the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Goodbye! Terrific pass and the wideout hauls it in for the touchdown. Brad, the wide receiver's route was the key on that play. You're right, Kirk. This route running really has improved and the quarterback has been throwing his weight a lot more. Mississippi Valley State comes to the line, only one man in the backfield. He can scoop. There's a missed tackle. They'll bring him down. That was a pretty good run. Incredible effort there, running the football by this guy. Going with the shotgun here. Nelson set to go to the air. Wants to throw outside. Cole with a takedown. They pick up good yardage that time on the pass play. Around midfield. Mississippi Valley State comes out in the shotgun. They go with the option. Sheds a tackler. Tries to juke. Brought down. He picked up a first down on that run, Coach. Yep, and you know, if you could pick up a few more first downs on the ground like that, it will re... Nelson with four wide receivers. He's going left. And got it complete. I like the defense that was called. Current drive. Mississippi Valley State lines up in a shotgun set. Option to the right. And now he pitches it. Gets past the tackler. He's into the open field. And he breaks another. And he's tackled. What a play. Play of the current drive. From the gun. Drops back to pass with a quick throw. Big opening. He's knocked out of bounds. They grab eight yards there. Mississippi Valley State comes out in the shotgun. Barn brings him down. Third down has been the take this one in for six. Nelson drops the throw. And they try to set up a screen. He's almost scoring at will out there. Was that his third touchdown catch of the half? Yeah, this guy is in his own. He's catching every single ball thrown his way. Boy, I'd hate to beat a defensive back down there. It looks like the quarterback is picking on him. Number 16 comes to the line with three wide. They'll throw on first down. He's going to go for the home run. To the 20. He has them on the fly. Connecticut calls a timeout. Three, yeah. three, it's on four. Cut. They get it out there on the top. And they hit him in the backfield. Just a minute, folks. There's a penalty on that play. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense. Automatic first down. Connecticut takes a timeout. Connecticut goes with the ace set here. Up the middle. He might have a chance. Touchdown, UConn. Nice job by the running back. Getting in for the touchdown. They line up in a double tight set. Nelson goes with the play fake. Got it to him on the run. Hargrave with a takedown. Nice decision. Should have been picked off there. The Delta Devil set up in the gun. The ball came free. 
And they fall on the loose ball. A nice recovery there by the cornerback. He's used to going after interceptions, but a turnover is a turnover. And he'll take it any way he can get it. I couldn't agree with you more, Coach. Thanks, Kirk. That's what I like to hear. Anytime. The Huskies line up in an I formation. Setting up the play action. Short toss. Complete. Trying to spin. Tackle. Way to look it in. Nice catch. They come out in a goal line set. Makes a move. And now he's got room to run. The 10. Touchdown, UConn! And that's his second rushing touchdown of the first half. And the head coach has to love the way this kid is running the football. Mississippi Valley State sets up with four receivers. Throws. Intercepted. And that turnover's got to hurt. Yeah, they wanted to rack up some points before they have to help Burrell. Sorry, it didn't work. The Husky come out in the ace formation. Across the middle with the interception. And they come up with a big, big interception. You might not believe this, but it looked like that quarterback threw it right at the defender. The Delta Devil come out showing three wide. Wants to go long and does. He got it. Touchdown. What an impressive call. I can hear the defense selling run all the way up here. Boy, did they fall for that one or what? As you know, a quarterback needs a short memory. So I really don't remember, Scooter. You know better than that. <laughs> and it's caught. Sheds that one. I like the defense that was called. <laughs> Connecticut lines up with three receivers. He's looking. Throws it to the outside. His receiver has it. And he's taken down. Connecticut takes a timeout. resulted in a touchdown. The kick is up. And he hooked it left. That'll do it for the first half here. We're tied as the players head to the locker room. They'll start this drive at the 38. They better block that linebacker. He is looking to make something happen. It's a direct snap. He's got an opening. And they make the stop. Looks to have been shaken up a bit on that play. This impact tailback would love nothing more than to have the ball in his hands right now. Bounces off the would-be tackler. Ricks brings him down. They go with a run. And that'll be the yard line. Rockington is in the zone and looking to make something happen. He can scoop. They'll bring him down. And that was a nice run. Kirk, that was a great job by that big offensive line. Yeah, it really was, Brad. And also, nice swing by the ball carrier to find that running lane. When you break one like that, you've got to give a lot of credit. And with three wide. What? They keep it on the ground with a tailback. He's into the open field. What a run. That's his second rushing touchdown of the game. And he hits the PAT. So with less than four minutes to go in the third quarter, the score is Connecticut 35, Mississippi Valley State 28.
Connecticut is ready to kick it away. Wade and number 42 deep to return. Sends it sailing downfield. Number 42 fields it in the end zone. He gets it. And good coverage on that play. Great coverage. There was a hole there, but it closed up quickly. Don't let the scoreboard fool you. This highly touted receiver completely dominated in the first two quarters. He's not just burning anyone out there. He's beating a very talented cornerback. Where's the safety? He's burning him too. Well, we'll see if this defense has any answers for him in the second half. Don't count on it, sweetheart. I've already seen enough in the first half to know that this receiver is not going to be denied the football. Now, that was a good-looking play. The quarterback put it where his receiver could get it, and now they have a first down. What I like is the faith that this quarterback has in his receiver. He's not afraid to throw it downfield. With four wide receivers. Big opening. Juku. The 10. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley State. The Huskies come out in the shotgun. Oh, what a move. Tackle. There's a play fake. Across the middle. Got it. They'll bring him down. And that pass and catch gives him a set here. Rockington takes a handoff. He's got an opening. He's off to the races, and it's a race he usually wins. To the 10. Touchdown, UConn. What do you think of that last score, guys? Well, as a defense, giving up one or two touchdowns on the ground is bad enough, but giving up three touchdowns to the same guy has got to hurt your team morale. Nelson lines up in the shotgun. Drops back to pass. He's going left. Got him on the run. And they make the stop at the 33. He looks to be hurt down there. Play the current drive. Nelson is back in the gun. Nelson options out to the left. Tries to juke. Neal on the run. Five-yard gain on the play. 45-yard line. The devil. Come out in a shotgun. Nelson drops back on first down. Throws this one out to the right. Branch with a takedown. Nice decision by the quarterback. Not only was it good decision making, but the offensive line protected just long enough for him. To and that'll bring this quarter to an end. Folks, we've played three, and our score is Connecticut 42, Mississippi Valley State 35. Three wide outs here. They'll throw on first down. Got it. And down he goes. 300 yards passing on a day for this quarterback, Kirk. He's been successful picking at this defense all along. Mississippi Valley State sets up with four receivers. Shakes off a tackle. And he's tackled. So with that run, they pick up another first. It's a nice job again up front by the offensive line. Spice red zone when performance matters the most. And the snap goes to the back. He might have a chance. That gives him two rushing scores on the day. They come out with three wide receivers. They snap it to the back. Has some daylight. Tackle. And that one goes for a big, big. Number 16 comes to the line with three wide. He jukes. Brought down. That last run catapults him over the 200-yard mark for the day. Connecticut goes with the ace set here. Steps up. Comes across the middle. Got him on the run. And here's a juke. The 10. And he's all the way in for the touchdown. Look at that. For a second there, I could have scored that back at the football. Beautiful play. Yeah, I don't know if it was the offensive coordinator, the head coach, or just the quarterback checking off. But my hand goes off to whoever called that play.
The Delta Devils line up with four wideouts. Throws down the middle. Complete on the run. Across midfield. Great pass play. This is the result they expect when they run this play. It wouldn't surprise me if they run it again and again right here. The devil set up in the gun. Nelson options out to the right. And he's taken down. He kept it himself and picked up. You bet he will. The devil line up with four wideouts. Steps up in the pocket. He unloads it. And it's caught. They'll bring him down. On third and long, they get the. Nelson lines up in the shotgun. Here's the option left. Sheds a tackler. And now he's got room to run. Number 48 recovers a loose ball. They tried the option there, and now they're on their way to the sideline. You're not going to stay on the field very long with sloppy play like that. I don't care if you're running the option or not. There's just no excuse. I'll tell you what. Write this down. The team with the most takeaways at the end of the year will have a winning record. And the teams with the most giveaways... And he'll just kneel it here. And that's the end of the game. Any final thoughts on this one, Coach? This is why I'm up here with you guys. Coaching a game like this might give you a heart attack. Connecticut really got all they asked for and more in this contest. Great job by both teams. Folks, thanks for tuning in to our game. Our final score, Connecticut 49, Mississippi Valley State 42. Well, that was pretty deflating, y'all. I really don't mind losing some games, and especially early on in a dynasty build, but man, the way that happened... That just uh, <laughs> that just left a bad taste in my mouth. And granted, I made a lot of mistakes, uh, mostly on defense. There were definitely a number of plays that went for huge yardage that probably shouldn't have broken tackles that like I'm just not sure what happened. And that's something in these older games. Um, it won't be like a clear broken tackle. It's like the defender won't make a play. And I normally just chalk that up to... Um, you know, my inexperience at this game. I've been playing it since it came out, um, but I definitely don't have as much time in it as I do with NCAA 14 or really some of the newer titles. Um, but anyways, I mean, you saw the mistakes. <laughs> uh, we'll try to correct it moving forward. I mean, obviously it's easier to play defense with better players, which kind of could go without saying. So we're going to assign... Some recruiting points here. And I generally go off Evil Dave's recruiting guide. Um, it's online. It's on GameFAQs. It's actually for NCAA 07. The recruiting's the same as 06. And that's what I generally use as far as applying points. I do it similarly to that guide. So he's got us at, is that number five, six, five? So Josh Buchanan has us at number five. That's not great. And I honestly normally wouldn't put points on him. Definitely won't put points on him. Um, yeah, LSU's a little bit more ahead than I would like. But we're in second. I'm going to start with 20 and see who else is interested. Oh, okay. Defensive tackle. We'll start with 15. We're in third. We definitely need some O linemen. Um, these none of these guys are as interested as I would have liked. I'm gonna dump the last twenty on this tailback. All right, well that's it for week one. Heartbreaking loss to UConn, and week two we get New Mexico State. Appreciate you watching the video and checking out the channel, and I will see you next time.